Welcome to the Sonya Buchanan Show, where we inspire one life, one smile at a time. Hey, you all. It is time for the Sonya Buchanan Show, where we inspire one life, one smile at a time. Listen, we have a great show for you today. But let me tell you, we're going to talk about relationships. We're going to dive into this subject. There are many people to talk about relationships on their podcast. And to me, I think everyone should talk about it because it perfects the recipe of relationships. So we're going to dive into it. But here's a little snippet of the title. And it's called, Are You Finding Animals or Are You Finding a Helpmate? So the next segment is going to be the discussion. Welcome to the Sonya Buchanan Show, where we inspire one life, one smile at a time. Listen, we have a great show for you today. Uh, I want to dive into relationships. And there are so many people on their platforms talk about relationships. And I encourage everyone to talk about this relationship thing because it helps identify, it helps show us how to bring the ingredients to perfection so everyone could find someone that fits exactly for them and I wanted to dive into relationships on my show today but first let me give you the title and it's called are you finding animals or a helpmate and uh, the reason I chose that title uh, just last week I posted a little segment about Adam and in the garden his instructions was to name the animals and this is not going to be a spiritual or anything to do with religion i just wanted to use the instructions that adam was given to name the animals and of course everyone knows that story and uh and adam named all the animals but he didn't find any compatibility with any of the animals uh until woman showed up and he found compatibility but let's dive into that really you know i want to take a moment and think about that and i want to make this a fun podcast today but i also want to bring my segment and my viewpoints and my opinion about it because if i bring my my opinion about relationships and you bring your opinion about relationships it to me i feel like we perfect the recipe of the category of relationship and it helps everybody to see it in a different light from a different perspective okay and uh, i was thinking about adam in the garden naming all these animals and i said what about the animals you know let's think about the characteristics of animals animals uh do not have a soul so they don't they're not emotional like a human being would be and they act out of their characteristics if we want to take a lion for instance a lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle but they are the fearless one so when they're hungry they would take out an elephant they would take out a giraffe they would take out a monkey and squirrel and snakes they they are fearless and you think about it when you're looking for a mate have you found anyone who is fearless and they take anybody out stand up and and be rambunctious with anyone don't have any respect with anybody they just you know i'm going i'm going for the i'm going for your heart i'm just going to just just grab it and just destroy you the animal characteristics of a person and let's think about the snake you know the snake of a person is one that slithers and you think is a friendly anaconda but it's really a rattlesnake in disguise you know and not to say that people are these but think about the characteristics of when you're going out finding a helpmate you know they could be in terms like a squirrel a squirrel is very smart they're very intelligent they they understand the nature and how to grow their food and how to prepare they're very just witty you know, I had a squirrel in my house at one time and I was trying to get them out. And the squirrel brought at least five other squirrels to fight me in my own house. And I didn't understand that. I'm thinking, I'm trying to get you out of my house. This is not, this is not your house. And I finally got them out. But later on, I noticed a couple of years ago that I started seeing this peach tree near my deck. I did not plant the peach tree, but the squirrel understood how to provide for him and his family. They planted this peach tree in my yard, and believe me, I'm not able to eat from the tree. I tried to eat from a tree, but the squirrels came and, and confiscated all their fruit 
for their family. I mean, we, we talk about that characteristics, a provider, you know, and we talk about monkeys and, and, and lions and tigers and snakes and birds, you know, birds characteristics, they fly around and they understand when winter is coming. They understand when spring is coming. They understand when summer is here, but birds fly around and they land on all different types of trees. Do you want a person who is like a bird who, who rests on every tree that is in the wilderness, which means that they're dating everybody in the world. They're not, uh, they're not committed to one particular tree unless they are wanting to put a nest there and they're getting ready to have other bird family. Okay, they will find the right perfect tree only for the purpose of having children and to hide their family. And we're talking about the characteristics of an animal, and but really, there's no difference in finding the characteristics of a person. How do they identify with these animals? Because like I stated, Adam knew, naming all these animals, which is more than what I just called out, that there were not a compatibility there for him. And it wasn't until woman was brought before him and he said, he looked up and he said, woman, let's think about that. You guys, how many times we go on all these dates and we find out we at the date and <laughs> find out, oh my God, what in the world did I just bring to this dinner table with me? They're talking all kind of crazy stuff. They don't understand um, that. You know, of course, they don't understand sitting there with you because you just met this person. You're out dating this person and they're comfortable in talking to you about the things that they're sharing with you without even thinking that what they're sharing may not be the right time to share because of the characteristics. And like I stated, the animals in which Adam was naming they all had characteristics. They all had a trait. They all had a demeanor about themselves and they don't, they didn't operate outside of what they were. A snake doesn't operate as a lion. A squirrel doesn't operate as a giraffe. They operated out of the characteristics of who they are. Now, man has a soul. So we can we can alter our characteristics by what we learn and what we know to be true. But I mean, you think about it, you're dating these new people and they're operating out of a uh, characteristics that is not part of what you were brought up into. And let's really dive into this, because I hear a lot of people stating that, oh, we're going to go out on a date, the first date. And I put out a challenge a couple of weeks ago and then I said, you know, the dating, the dating rules should change and dating for first dates should be free. It should be a uh, communication where you meet someone in a free establishment or take into a coffee shop and you just have coffee and tea or you can go to a park and have a sitting. That should really be the first date. The only reason why I say this, and I know a lot of people is not going to agree with me on this, is that when you take someone out on a date, you want to impress them. Most often when men want to impress, they spend at least $175 um, for the first date. Now, if you think about it, you're looking for a helpmate. You're looking for someone that you can have a relationship with on a long term. But if you think about it, let's really calculate this. And now, if you go out on a date, and right now we are living in the 20th first century, dates are expensive. So, okay, let's go out on a date, a nice restaurant, and the lady looks nice, and the gentleman looks nice, and you spend for one dinner on the first date $175. Now, if that person is not a fit for you and you're totally disappointed, you just spent $175, not just $175 because after dinner, you want to go to the movies and the movies for the both of you could run up to $40, depending if she want popcorn and drinks at the movies. So you adding, you adding $175 plus $40 on a first date to someone you have no idea if they are animal characteristics or a helpmate characteristic, okay? So if you think about it, if the person find out that they are not compatible, they are saying things that do not register with you, is you, you're just not feeling that person. You just spent $175 plus $40 for the movie, 
Okay. If you do that the next week and you meet somebody, that's $175 again. That's two weeks. That's $350 for two weeks. You have spent on two dates and $80 now you spent for the movies. And uh, that's $350 plus $80. Okay. And neither dates are compatible for you. So you go on a third date with a new person. You said no movie this time, just dinner. And that's another $175. That's $525 in three weeks for a gentleman taking a woman out on a date. Now, when you add the fourth week, because you're still looking for compatibility, and you add another $175, that's $700 in a month that you have spent of no investment because every four dates wasn't a compatibility for you. It did not meet your standard of what a helpmate should be. You, you see where I'm going? <laughs> $700. Can you think about that $700? I haven't even included the movie part. That's $700 for two and the two dates you took to the movies. That's $780, okay? That you spent. Now think about this. Now we all want to make an, uh, a wise investment on our money. Now this male who have taken four ladies out in one month has spent $780 on someone that he is not going to go on a second date with because they're not a compatibility. But can you imagine what the money that you're not going to get an investment on a return on that $780. You just wasted $780. Think about what you could do with $780. You could invest it. You could bought you could have bought at least three stocks of Tesla or Google stock. And at least, even if the Google stock only goes up to two and three dollars, you have an investment on your return of money. Going on dates that you're not compatible with, there's no return on your money. That's just wasted money there. So I challenged the dating rule to change for first dates, be free. Go to a place where you don't have to spend $175. You, you spend that first date on getting to know each other face to face and having, having a nice a uh, lunch. You can make your own lunch. Bring a sandwich, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Bring a coffee and tea, or go to a coffee shop. Because at this point, at this point in your world, you have to think about: Do I really want to spend one hundred and seventy-five dollars? You know, for men, for real men, like to take ladies out and pay for the dinner. So I encourage the dating rule and the standards on first dates will change immediately. And if women are expecting men on their first date to spend all this money, I'm not talking about millionaires and billionaires. Now, they can afford to do all that. But common people that you're looking for to be a helpmate, you have to look at it in a different way because $700 of wasted money and there's no investment on the return and you just meeting this person although I know I know you've been talking on the phone you've been texting you've been facetiming no but when you take somebody out and you're face to face the whole scenario of the communication changes you're now seeing their expressions face to face it's just something about the chemistry the energy there it's not compatible and energy cannot be deceived i'm telling you it is it cannot be deceived so i want you all to think about that on the data rule thing because i met this gentleman and uh and he brought this to light to me about the dating he said he was spending all this money he said he took one lady out on a date and he spent he said he spent almost 250 dollars for that night trying to impress her because when he met the young lady she was just the sweetest and he said he took her out and it was completely different he said it was just something about the energy it just was not clicking he said that he says my peace left he said do you not understand why his peace left because they had been speaking over a course of a month and everything seemed to be fine until they went on that first date um and he says he said, I'm giving up on dating. He said, because I'm not going to be able to comprehend spending all this money 
on someone that I'm not going to make into a relationship for a long extended time. And and I sat down and I thought about it. I never thought about it in such a way what it could do to a man's budget in his life. And especially if you want to date someone that is doing very well, you want to make sure that they continue to do very well financially so they could be a provider, a uh, provider or protector, you know, and, and professing that you are they uh they're a woman that they are wanting to spend the next year to three years to be with you or to marry you you want them to be in a good financial state because they are providers okay so i want you to really consider that and you know after i was doing all this calculation using the amount of money of 175 dollars per date i calculated that by 12 and you know how much that added up to? And I'm just talking about the date. We're not even talking about the the extra stuff, the movies, the holidays, Valentine's Day. We're not even talking about all that. And seven hundred dollars times twelve. You know how much that is? That's eighty four hundred dollars. Now, if you're still looking for someone after a year's term dating new people, you have spent eight thousand four hundred dollars on dates that you are not calling a helpmate. It's almost that you have been finding animals that have characteristics that is not compatible to what you are or what you can call a helpmate for a long, long term, 60 years. Okay, eighty four hundred dollars. That's a lot of money, you guys. That's a lot of investment that you could have made uh, if you would have invested eighty four hundred dollars. I just wanted to bring that highlight <laughs> to you and make an awareness to People who are working and trying to build and trying to invest and trying to go on vacations. And you know how many vacations you can go on? Eight and four hundred dollars? You can go you can go to Africa. I I guess. You know, you can go to you can go to Italy and Paris for eighty four hundred dollars. Or you can just save the money to buy a house or something. But to waste on dating first dates and they didn't invest into anything think about that think about it you guys and ladies i want you to be aware of he's not just dating you individually he's still looking for a helpmate so you know just kind of be a little lenient and i know you want to be wine and dined and all of that good stuff but wine and dine yourself and think about what you're looking for and as a man perspective Think about what you're looking for and thinking about the financial consequences that is going to uh, affect on both parties. The receiver as the woman and the giver as the man. Because if you're both looking for the same thing, you want a man who is able to provide for you and also be responsible. And you want a young lady to understand that and... It just makes life so much easier when you look at it in a different perspective, okay? But I I wanted to dive into this because there are so many different rules that are changing. Now, I'm not into the, the, the dating thing. I would like to date, but I'm not really sure exactly what the rules are. Who pays for what? And I hear people saying 50-50. But I come from a, a, a world where the male pays for the date not me flip out 50 50 i i'm i'm just not that type of girl that i'm gonna flip out 50 <laughs> 50 i'm i'm not so if i'm just not i'm not flip, fiddling out the tip and all of that because he's he's finding me how is he finding me and i got to help him find me by paying for our dinner no thank you <laughs> you know now we get together my financial um, the way I look at finances is, is completely in order. But far as him finding me, I want he he will be the one to pay one hundred percent for a dinner. And um, but listen, I want you all to be wise when you're dating people because um, the the game has changed. Another perspective I wanted to go into is. Is how we are dating and the cautionary and how we're dating and uh, allowing the steps to be skipped. You know, although we are so 
eager to find relationships in our life. Sometimes we miss signs. Sometimes we miss things that we try to ignore because we're so desperate and wanting to be in a relationship. But you cannot ignore those uh, signs in the beginning. If you see something, if something is pointed out to you in the midst of you meeting somebody, write that particular thing down. Okay, so you don't want to miss these little signs that, hmm, if you do, hmm, write that down because that could come back to be something that you may not be able to deal with. Um, I had met this uh, person a couple of years ago, and because I haven't been in the dating, uh, the dating community in a long time, so I was not sure. So I began to look and look at videos talking about relationships. I was reading about relationships. I was listening to other people about relationships and I was doing all this stuff trying to educate myself. And that's what you do when you're not familiar with a subject. You educate yourself. But what I found out when I met the person and and what I was being educated, I was seeing the signs of what they were doing. But guess what was happening? I was listening to what I was being educated instead of looking at the individual and finding out about that person without being educated about that because everyone is different. The people who are educating you, they don't know you and your life and your journey. They don't know him and his life and his journey. And I could take that information, good information. I could take that information and I can twist it. But to find out that the twistedness is not accurate with the person that you've met. And that's what I found out. I was like, wow, this person, when he says this, this is what he means. There's nothing twisted about it. There's nothing confusing about it. Although when I was listening to the the videos and reading the books, I was like, oh, he's doing this right here. This is what this means. But no, I got to check in my spirit. And it informed me, no, that's not what he is meaning. He is me. This is, I had to get clarity. It was just something that was highlighted in me as I was I was meeting this new person and I had to stop listening to the videos and I had to stop reading the material and I had to just take the information that the person that I met at face value because that's exactly what he meant. Everything that he was saying was at face value. It wasn't nothing twisted. And and I, I was so excited about the fact that I could take this person's word and that's exactly what he means. And and, uh, and I wondered how many times that we meet someone and it's at the purest state and they are to a person, a male counterpart who is at face value. And because we're over here listening to all this other stuff, okay, and we come over and bring our twisted thought process in this new relationship and it gets all confused and, and it gets all jaded and it gets all twisted and, and arguments start to happen and all of that. When in terms that the person was exact, the male counterpart was when he said this is what he said was exactly what he said. And what I want to dive into, ladies and gentlemen to go in with it as this is a new pure relationship go in find out exactly what you are looking for in a relationship and what you are not looking for in a relationships and look at the characteristics is it something that i will be able to live with the characteristics or is the conversation how do they deal with uh, the seasonal four seasons. How do they deal with tragedy? How do they deal with disappointment? How do they deal with uh, not having enough? How do they deal with uh, emergencies? How do they respond? These are the things sometimes you have to date someone. If you are consistent and you found someone that you, there's a possibility that they could be a helpmate. That how are they in the four seasons? Uh, you have spring, summer, winter, and fall. How are they? Take observance of how they are. Take observance how they treat people. Take observance when they are hungry. How do they react? I mean, these are the things that you look at because it could be a continuation when you make this person a helpmate that you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. These are the simple steps. 
These are something that to be thinking about, not not about whether or not this person going through another person's phone trying to see, want to know their codes. When you're dating, that information is private. Even if you're married, why would you want to know that information? I mean, that that says you have trust issues. And I understand that there are reasons to have trust issues in our world, but why would you why would you create that deception and a relationship that's pure. These are the things that I want you to consider and I'm giving my viewpoint on on this information and finding out exactly what it is it that you you're looking for. What what who are you as your characteristics? Uh what can you deal with? What are your needs? What are your wants? What are your disadvantages? What are your things that you are not going to deal with? Uh what are the things that the type of food that you are. Are you a person that's lazy? Are you a person that likes to work out? You know, and uh, just to share a little bit of uh, the reason why I want to go into this is because I had met this person. My neighbor had a barbecue and he invited me over and he had his male companions over and they was having a good time. This is like many years ago. And so his friend comes over to my home and uh, he gets to telling me and bragging about he used to be a national baseball player, but he hurt his knee. Now, I'm not the type of person who want to hear about you bragging. I, I don't care anything about that because bragging does not do anything for a relationship ex- except cause inferiority complex with the other counterpart. And then you start trying to compete with the person. But he started talking about this. So he I invited him over. He was over here. And he wanted something to drink. I gave him something to drink. And I said, hey, let's go out and, like, you know, just grab some tea or coffee or get a bite to eat. This person said to me, oh, I didn't bring my wallet. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you were at my house and you didn't bring your wallet? and But you're drinking my my soda and my water? You at my house, sitting in my house, and you didn't bring your wallet? Okay. And then I I tested because I knew this final question I did ask them. I said, do you know how to put up a ceiling fan? Because I need you to know you you jacked up your knee. You're not in a national baseball anymore. And uh, so I wanted to know what type of person he is. I said, you know how to put up a ceiling fan? (laughs) Yeah, This is the truth. And all I needed was his strength to hold up the fan. I knew how to put the wires together. And uh, he says, no, I don't know how to do that. And da, 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 da. And I said, you don't know the difference between the wiring? You know, and he says, no. So he gets upset and he leaves. And he never did let me finish. I said, I just need you to hold it. You know, we could just, you know, play around and do it together, you know. But he leaves and get all offended and da, 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 da. But right there at that moment, I observed a couple of things. One, he did not bring his wallet which baffled me. Everybody brings their wallet. Uh, number two, you hurt your knee. You're bragging about something that you're no longer. This is the first date, the first meeting, greeting meeting. And you're telling me about you hurt your knee. Then you say you don't know how to do that. And, and I was trying to register in my mind how many more excuses <laughs> am I going to be able to deal with? If you're just telling me all these excuses not to even want to know me or just to have fun, then I just said, okay, bye-bye. He never came back because that the warning signs was there. Everything was like a problem. And I'm thinking the first date should be fun. The first date should be laughter. And joking and getting to know each other because there's nothing like having a relationship and you're laughing about things. Even even default things, you're laughing about it. It shows that your characteristic is able to laugh at some of the issues and problems in your life. Or let's tackle this anyway. Let's even let's even try to do this. We may laugh about it. You know, this is some of the characteristics where you want to go in and find out what you're gonna make a helpmate with, okay? Uh, that was just my little segment of sharing of one segment. It, it was only one greet and, greet and meet and greet with him. And I knew this is not going to work. You've already given me all these excuses and problems that you're having not to enjoy my company. 
And, um, but you all, the dating pool is wide. And I believe that we do have someone for everyone. It's just that you have to find the characteristics. If you want to find animals, that's fine. You're both an animal. Two lions together, <laughs> it, it works. If you want to continue finding animals, you may be a giraffe. You need to find another giraffe. You may need to find another tiger because you're a tiger. You may need to find another snake because you're a snake. You like to slither around. Both of y'all can slither around and do a little sneaky thing and strike at each other. You know, crazy stuff like that. And just to share one more little story with you. And I had a, a female friend who was married. And I and I went to visit them in another state, you know, on vacation. And uh, and a uh, and a husband was going to work, and they had this uh, this argument that morning. And I remember, and because he was going to work, she did not uh, respect the fact that he was getting ready to go to work. So she hid his keys so that he would be late for work because of their argument. And and I sat there, you know, because I observe. I don't get into people uh, problems and their arguments when they're in a relationship. And I observed. This is back when I was in my late 20s. I observed the actions and the fact that she hid his keys so he would be late for work. And I thought at that moment, I said, he's not, you're not hurting him. Uh, you hurting yourself because he's to, he's the provider of the family and him being late for work. He could get fired and you won't be provided for now you'll be in the position of providing for the family because he won't have the income to provide for the household because you hid his keys. It was things like that that made me think about the importance of the right relationship. Because when you care about a person, no matter what kind of argument that you have, you will not cause a life changing consequence in their life because of your argument. Okay. Okay. But these are the things I want to talk about today and give you a whole different perspective on what I feel about a relationship and being compatible. Me personally, I'm looking for a helpmate. I'm not looking for animals. And hopefully the person that finds me is not looking for an animal either. And I find out later, and, but they're looking for a helpmate. So the compatibility will be like this rhythm. So when he looks up at me, he will recognize woman and no, because he knows that he is provider and a responsible male counterpart. Okay, so basically to end this podcast and I'm bringing it to the to the uh, end of it is that knowing who you are will help you find your helpmate and knowing who you are. If you are an animal may help you find another animal in the jungle. I'm not looking to live in the jungle. I'm looking to live in paradise with a helpmate. And, uh, of course, it's not going to be uh, the most easiest. You're going to have arguments. You're going to have disagreements. But at least you know at the beginning of the stages of your relationship and dating into marriage that you have a helpmate. And the part that you can get through the entanglement of arguments and disagreements and uh, confusion about the communication that is in your relationship. Okay? Again, you guys, the name of our podcast today, Are You Finding Animals or a Helpmate? Uh, I hope that you enjoyed our show today. Uh, be so kind to leave a comment and, uh, and we could dive into this a little bit more and make it fun. Uh, because relationships is something that I truly believe everyone deserved at least to have one. But you got to find the right one. Okay? This is your girl with the Sonya Buchanan Show. Well, we inspire one life, one smile at a time. Listen, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. And, uh, and be cautious and also be kind to one another as you find your helpmate. Until next week. Thank you for joining our podcast today. The podcast was produced and edited by Sonia Cannon. For more information about the host, you can go to sonbuchanan.com. For information about Comfort and Promises broadcast community, you can go to comfortandpromises.com.